I'm delighted we've got one of the best coaches in football that is now going to take on the challenge with us uh, to get Leeds United uh, to the next stage, I back to compete for trophies. I just felt that it was always on the agenda, although I had a two-year contract, that I would go there for one year. And um, then, um, in my opinion, Martin O'Neill was the one that I think they were talking to, uh, would take over. And it was just a matter of um, if certain things happened bad enough that I would walk, you know, which I wasn't prepared to do. He breezed into Ellen Road, tickled pink. But Venables didn't know that the battle to keep his star defender had been lost before it even began. I met um, Rio Ferdinand and uh, King of the Harvest, who was his representation at the time, um, to, to keep him there, you know. And I, I must have spoke to him for an hour to say where we were going to go and what we were going to do. You know, and they're looking to me. They think, doesn't he know then, you know, or is he just a liar? And... Uh, which was embarrassing. After some memorable early wins, everything soon turned sour, and in the face of huge debts, O'Leary's squad was being broken up. By now, even the fans were glad to see the back of Bowyer, but Jonathan Woodgate was seen as untouchable. Should we have spent so heavily in the past? Probably not. But we lived the dream. We enjoyed the dream. Only by making the right decisions today can we rekindle the dream once again in the future. My head keeps spinning. He said, that, well, you didn't look very happy. He said, Peter, and I said, well, what, do you want a round of applause? <laughs> I said, well, no, that's the way I felt. Woodgate going, it was, there, it was really showing that we were showing no sensitivity for the football side. It was sheer, we've got to do this, this is where we're going. Yeah, hold on, just have a look back here and it was a bit like you know what's happening and the, the soul is getting ripped out here to sell somebody who meant so much to Leeds United and certainly since the time I was there uh, was extremely difficult and at the time I thought I probably should have resigned uh, when we sold him Ridsdale was now public enemy number one but within two months, it was Terry Venables who was out on his ear. It was in three papers on the same day, and I did go, I left the training ground and confronted um, uh, Peter Ridsdale about it. And uh, he started off saying, no, no, there's no truth in it whatsoever. But by talking and talking, I realised there was. The way we do business is that if we'd made that decision, we weren't trying to persuade somebody to say, OK, well, I'll go instead of me having the, the nerve or the ability to inform somebody of the board's decision. I agreed to meet Terry uh, to convey the board's decision to him, and that's exactly what I did. So he said, uh, well, perhaps a change would be good. He said, but um, I don't know. You know, it's up to you. What do you want to do? So I said, well, I want to stay here till the end of the season. And I've got a year next year to come as well, which must have possibly worried him a bit. So. And out of it, he uh, finally thought it would be a good idea to have a change. So uh, that's, that's, in a nutshell, what happened. Mind the road. You can't go through life regretting this. Should, should David have gone? Should Terry have been appointed? Uh, the fact is that during David's time, we had the most successful spell when I was chairman, and Terry's tenure was disappointing. And the sad thing is that you know, with all the, the good nights, you know, the chairmanship's a great job, and with the bad days, it's a difficult job. But you can't moan about the fact that you have difficult days as well. That does come with the job, and you either do the job or you get out, which ultimately is what I decided to do. I do know the history of the football club being a, uh, a Liverpool fan as a youngster. And even though it is, it is um, difficult times, so to speak, it's still a club that most people, including yourself, you know, it's, it's an honour to manage. And I've just got to, you know, um, try and get back to the good times. Don left them with champions, and at that time, two million pound in the bank. So they became 
uh, skint in the second division by the early 80s. So it happened before. Well, let's hope it doesn't happen again. Still a lead support, so nobody will ever take that away from me. And I, I wish uh, the current board every success, and I hope Leeds United is successful. My ambition is to steady the ship, and then to push us forward, back, up the table, and to make it a great club once more. I'm grateful that uh, the support they gave me, and that uh, I'll always uh, want those fans to do well. As long as the club survive and stay among the elite, I think that's the most important thing. That club, those supporters, that potential, people think, and quite rightly, that it should be a team competing for the game's top honours. I'm sure, you know, a great club like that in the tradition, they'll come back. We proved, we proved it way back in 1990 that it can happen. I'm sure it'll happen again. How, how do you clear debts that we're in? It's going to be ever so difficult. It's going to have to have a really good run or produce somebody's got to come along and make Leeds United great again. People have ups and downs in life and you've got to face them. You have a big enough to face them and battle them and get on with it or you're not.